question will algorithms solve the problems of climate change more data let us monitor the earth optimize solar panels and generally understand problems but it is but is it sustainable um, Jens Olig um, from algorithm watch and Frederike Rode Institute for ecological economic research uh, will talk a little bit about this problem and um, I'm looking forward to this talk so I give over to now to Jens and Frederike. Hello, good morning. Uh, I hope I'm, I'm, um, I'm audible um, and, and thank you so much uh, uh, for having us. Um, so we will talk about our project called SUSTAIN, the, the, the Sustainability Index for Artificial Intelligence. Um, and we are i um, very excited because it's um, about the first time that we are going to present this to a, to a larger audience. And uh, I think this is a, a good uh, way to introduce this to the world. So who we are, um, as our Harold already mentioned um, in the introduction, there are uh, two organizations involved, but there's actually a third one uh, that is not present today. So there's uh, the Institute for Ecological um, Economic Studies and there's uh, Algorithm Watch, uh, both based in Berlin. There's also the Technical University of Berlin or rather the uh, Distributed Artificial Intelligence Lab there. Um, and we are running this pro, uh, project called SUSTAIN, Sustainability Index for Artificial Intelligence, um, where we want to um, find out over the course of the next uh, three years uh, how we can measure and um, index uh, yeah, um, criteria for the sustainability of um, algorithms. Um, there is funding for that. Uh, luckily, um, the Federal Ministry of uh, Environment uh, fund, funds this project. And yeah, this is based on a resolution of the German parliament, of course. So when we talk about sustainable uh, AI, there are lots of questions. And some of them were already mentioned in the introduction. So Will we be able to stop climate change uh, through better monitoring our planet? Unlikely so. Uh, probably there's no magical solution uh, to all of that. But uh, on the other hand, it is uh, very clear that uh, once we have uh, more data and better data, we can, of course, make more informed decisions. Um, so uh, looking at where... Um, AI is actually helpful for sustainability is uh, one part of uh, the question. And the other uh, part is how does it affect sustainability? So um, there's a lot of talk about energy consumptions, um, consumption, um, how much uh, energy do um, uh, data centers uh, suck up? Um, and there are already a few numbers that are usually thrown around in that context. Um, I believe that Friederike will at least mention that uh, later. Um, there, are, there are numbers that say, uh, you know, this, this algorithm uh, takes about the energy of uh, that many cars, etc. cetera. Um, is that all uh, true? Is, is this something that um, we can um, put into concrete numbers that uh, remains to be seen? But uh, sustainability goes a bit further. It's not only about um, doing something that is good for the environment. Uh, a sustainable world is, uh, is a world that is uh, worth living in. And uh, a lot of the magical uh, artificial intelligence solutions that are proposed, um, once you look behind the scenes, you will notice that the emperor wears no clothes and uh, what is behind all the magic of the AI is uh, maybe good old uh, precarious work conditions. Uh, people who are clicking through mundane tasks and um, yeah, maybe uh, 
don't live in a very sustainable environment. We call these people click workers. Um, and a lot of the things that you can um, see maybe in your um, speakers that you have at home that uh, answer all the questions are maybe not the result of uh, some nifty algorithm, but uh, rather the work of uh, click workers. Um, so if uh, we put this aspect uh, also into the question of uh, sustainable AI, the question becomes much larger than uh, what is good for the environment. It becomes a question of um, how can we live in a livable world? And the question is very real. And uh, we see things uh, affecting that uh, every day. We see questions of um, uh, discrimination, racial bias uh, in algorithms. Um, we um, see questions of uh, Google Translate, um, yeah, translating uh, things on a database uh, that um, perpetuates uh, um, gendered uh, bias and uh, se sexist stereotypes. Is this uh, really the sustainable world that we want to live in just with some AI? I think not. By the way, um, artificial intelligence is, is a huge word and um, it sometimes gets used in, in, in contexts where uh, contexts where people don't seem to to understand what they're talking about. Um, so it's uh, easier to narrow it down. Um, algorithm is, is another word um, with an organization like Algorithm Watch. Of course, we don't watch um, the performance of, um, I don't know, Quicksort or something like that. We are interested in automated decision-making systems. So every time we're based on data and uh, statistical um, transformation of that data, maybe in the form of neural networks or, or machine learning, or maybe not. Um, and uh, decisions are made based on that, uh, and they have an impact on society. We are interested in that. Um, and uh, right now, our interest uh, with Sustain is um, sustainability in that context. Sustainability is actually a really, really old concept, uh, um, much, much older than uh, than a century. Um, funnily enough, it, it, it comes from Germany. Um, so uh, nowadays you see it everywhere, but uh, in the beginning it just meant uh, a very simple thing uh, from forestry. Um, to be sustainable, just don't cut down more trees than you plant. But in 2015, uh, the United Nations um, picked this up and now sustainability uh, is everywhere in the form of the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals uh, that were uh, adopted by the United Nations General Assembly. Basically a set of uh, goals that will make our world more livable. We uh, want to have um, no poverty in this world. Uh, we want to have zero hunger. Um, and of course, uh, life underwater, climate action and life on land um, are things that are all playing in uh, in this sustainable development goals. There are sub goals and, and uh, everything around that. Um, to make uh, a livable planet, uh, at least some of these goals have to be considered and uh, a livable planet also uh, includes artificial intelligence and uh, algorithmic decision making. So let's bring these two together. Um, it is all linked and all brought together by uh, these goals interacting. So there are uh, questions of uh, ecological sustainability Let's not burn the planet. If we fail to do that, um, everything else um, becomes um, less important because we don't have a planet to um, plan all the other steps about. But we will also want to make life livable for human beings. Uh, having um, something that is ecological but uh, requires a lot of people working in precarious um, um, uh, work conditions is uh, not the goal. Um, we want to have a society that uh, um, 
yeah takes out the the uh, the full um, uh, potential of every human being um, and uh, thirdly if everything uh, crashes the economy um, we have uh, an ecological uh, sustainable world and uh, a socially just world but uh, uh, economically um, we just get more and more poverty that doesn't really work so everything is connected Frederike will continue with this. Thank you very much, Jens, and good morning <laughs> uh, from my side. Um, now that we have the three pillars, the question is, um, how do we act if um, there are conflicting goals between the pillars? For example, if the protection of the environment uh, is not appropriate for all social groups because it's more expensive, or if there are conflicting goals between um, ecological, social, and uh, the uh, economic sphere, uh, which in our uh, current economic system um, mostly is the case, um, then we should come uh, to a perspective which allows for a kind of prioritization um, of the uh, three pillars. Um, and the answer to this question is the um, perspective of the nested dependencies. Um, Without the environment, um, the society and the economy are not uh, um, cannot exist. Um, so our planetary boundaries um, are the basis of our survival. Um, and uh, as Jens already mentioned, there's a codependency of all the three pillars. Um, so in other words, this um, nested dependencies model um, acknowledges the inherent value of um, the environment uh, and prioritizes uh, the health um, of our planet and a viable society over economic gains. Um, next slide, please. But what, what are we actually talking about when we want to connect A to sustainability? From our point of view, there are um, two differing perspectives. Um, the first one, um, which, ma which makes up the main motivation of this project, um, is the question of how can we access, uh, uh, assess kind of all existing AI-based system or ADM um, systems um, uh, from a sustainability pers perspective. Um, so. With an AI-based system, as Jens already mentioned, we mainly refer to um, machine learning, a certain area of weak artificial intelligence, because not everything is artificial intelligence, what is <laughs> uh, sometimes uh, called artificial intelligence. Um, and we uh, especially refer to deep learning based on artificial neural networks. Um, I will leave it like that for the moment. <laughs> But what is the aim of our project? Um, um, we want to develop a framework for um, assessing the impact of existing AI-based systems um, and their application with regard to their social, ecological, and economic uh, risks. Um, that is, we want to develop um, a holistic perspective. Um, for assessing AI-based systems um, and showing which screws you can turn <laughs> um, to develop, train, and apply them in a more sustainable way. That is one perspective. We call it sustainable AI or sustainable AI-based system um, to make it more precise. Um, another perspective which um, has recently come up and which Jens um, already mentioned as well is the question of AI for sustainability. So how can we use, develop, apply AI-based system in favor of our climate or in favor of environmental goals, in favor of um, social goals? Sometimes it's called AI for Earth or AI for good. But that's, in our point of view, that's a kind of different question because these kind of applications only make up a minority of all um, AI applications um, that are existing in the world. Next slide, please. Um, in a way, we want to kind of um, 
integrate those two perspectives. The first aim is to create sustainability criteria for principally all AI-based system to, um, or at least to bring us a little bit closer to the goal um, to develop this kind of assessment criteria. Um, uh, and on the other side, we will um, examine three case studies. Um, in sectors which are of high relevance for the sustainable development goals, such as energy, mobility, and we chose, an, we, we, cho uh, we chose another one, which is online shopping, because we think the impact um, is very high and there's very uh, much AI-based system used in this um, domain. So we will um, examine in the case studies what uh, what can we expect from AI-based system for the energy transition, the mobility transition, and so on, uh, um, for the sustainable for reaching the sustainable development goals? Um, the results of the um, cr uh, sustainability cr criteria and assessment and of the case studies um, were collected in sustainable AI imports. Um, if our criteria uh, work out very well, perhaps we, uh, we are able to create an index showing uh, like what kind of, <laughs> how is the, 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 the certain AI-based system, uh, how can we assess it in terms of sustainable sustainability. Um, and perhaps we can, uh, this can be displayed on a website, a da dashboard or an app. And we want to develop policy recommendations and guidelines for sustainable AI development, which mainly are referring to the community who is training, developing, and the uh, um, organizations who are implementing and using AI-based system. Um, the next slide, please. Um, uh, it's a little bit small. Perhaps you cannot read it, but it doesn't matter that much. Um, our first thought within this project was um, how can we find a structure um, out of the universe of impacts <laughs> related to AI one can imagine. Um, our first answer was this kind of figure um, which shows three levels which we consider as um, um, appropriate for answering the question on how to, to um, measure or to, uh, to, to look at the, the impacts of AI-based system. The first one is the algorithm itself, or we call it algorithmic system because it's not only the algorithm, it's also about not only about how the algorithm is designed, but also about how the data is gathered what kind of data is used, um, what is the utility function of the um, AI-based system, what in our perspective is a really important question. Um, so that's the most inherent impacts um, you can imagine when it comes to AI. Then we have the application level. Um, here the question is in which sector, in which domain is the um, AI-based system used um, and what social, ecological, and economic impacts or risks are related to the application um, of this AI-based system. So you can, for example, imagine um, uh, using AI for medical diagnostics or for advertising. Um, you can use it for predictive maintenance uh, or for selecting job applicants. And as you can imagine, the impact related to this certain area um, um, is very different, might be very different. Um, so that's a, no, not the, <laughs> so that's a um, important question. And the, the third one is the, 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 like, the kind of big <laughs> question of the societal level, the systemic level. Um, it's like what impact does the application of this AI based system in a certain area does on our um, yeah, societal goals. And related to, the, to, do, to this question is uh, the question of how can it, um, uh, can it help us to change structures, practices for 
um, sustainable development. So I think the uh, question on how uh, AI can help uh, our society to get more sustainable is mostly um, related to this uh, third level and not uh, to the level of like, how do we de design the algorithmic um, system? Um, so our first step was to um, to collect the various literature related to um, to the uh, impacts of AI and work out some preliminary criteria. Next slide, please. Um, um, and we uh, tried to find uh, ex for out of the existing literature and um, we also created some new criteria, especially in the domain of um, economic uh, dimension. Um, in the social dimension, uh, we found um, those crit uh, criteria you can see here. It's about transparency, traceability, fairness and justice, harm avoidance, non-discrimination, a quite important um, issue for every AI-based system with, which uh, is interacting with humans or which is making decisions. Um, about humans, um, privacy and data protection for sure, um, respect for human uh, autonomy and freedom, human oversight and robustness and accuracy. And at the moment we are about to trying to develop indicators for uh, those criteria uh, on uh, how you can, uh, on, on, on the basis of which you can assess um, systems such like, such like uh, were there, did they make pre-tests with the AI-based system and stuff like this. Um, next slide, please. Uh, the economic dimension, um, in our perspective, um, it's the most um, difficult <laughs> dimension for criteria because it uh, relates to very different levels of society. So, um, in our um, perspective, we collected, well, we, we tried to collect some uh, of the criteria which might be feasible um, for an uh, assessment, uh, which are like taxes. So, is the organization um, paying taxes, data protection, uh, data collection practices, um, but also aspects, aspects like market power, anti corruptive, uh, anti competitive behavior privacy policies, anti-corruption, labor market effects, which are like more on the structural level, um, income distribution, working conditions, as um, Jens already mentioned, the click worker issue uh, and stuff like this, and um, impact on um, co uh, competitiveness, supervision and robustness and accuracy, which we had already before, but perhaps we can also um, see it as kind of economic um, criteria. Um, then uh, there's also going on a kind of growing discussion about the ecological impacts of AI-based system. And it's mainly about the energy consumption, um, the CO2 uh, emissions, for example, the share of re renewables, the ecological, um, but also the ecological impacts on consumption patterns, uh, patterns uh, resource consumption or, for example, waste and recycling. Do we need ever more devices, sensors and stuff like this for applying all this magical AI systems? <laughs> um, and does this really make our world more sustainable or uh, does this in fact uh, harm our environment more than it is saving the environment? Um, at the moment, we are, think, we are thinking about how we can distinguish um, 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 between, um, between different levels of AI deployment because they might entail very different impacts. Some of, uh, some of you might know, as Jens already mentioned at the beginning, um, a study from Emma Strubel and colleagues, and the results often are cited like this, um, the carbon footprint of training a single AI um, is as much as 284 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent, five times the lifetime emissions of an average car. But in fact, this number is not true that way because this number refers to um, neural architecture, uh, neural network architecture search. So it's not the same as training a, a uh, common uh, model, but it's like 
a thing uh, people only do for research purposes and which costs like two millions of dollars of dollar which no normal organization would do to train like a single model for for um for like showing me what kind of genes i can buy if i because i bought this one uh, um so recommendation systems or stuff like this so we really have to look a little bit closer on how do we really want to assess the impacts of ai based system and that's why we are trying to distinguish between like three levels and the one is the network optimization or network architecture research with which mainly refers to the research area then we have the training of the artificial neural network um, and then we have the inference process. So the process where the um, the model really is applied and makes decisions or um, helps to um, um, make decisions. So we think we should, especially when it comes to ecological dimension, it's uh, important to um, distinguish between these um, three um, levels. Um, and with our project, um, we would like to open the black box a little bit more um, and create awareness um, among amongst um, uh, the involved actors about the risks. Um, uh, and um, the, we, we, uh, about the risks we buy into when we try to solve like every optimization problem, no matter how small, with complex deep learning algorithms. Um, and what can we do um, to avoid uh, those risks um, and improve AI-based system um, in a sustainable way? Thank you very much. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much. Uh, are you finished with your talk here? Uh, Jens? <laughs> Okay, okay, sorry. Um, thank you for your very interesting talk. Um, so I think we already know, but we know it much better now that the world is really complex. So, um, um, and uh, I think this research um, is, is really important for society. Um, but for me, when I listen to your talk, and I think this could be perhaps the first question before uh, people hopefully started to uh, put questions in the pad, um, you can find it in the Fahrplan. Um, um, and you can also put your questions in German there if you want. So, but uh, for me, it was like, uh, but what can, uh, you know, when I listen to these complex things, um, what can I do as a person? depending on your research well in the end i think you will have uh, something that um, um, for you as an interested person will help you to understand the whole situation better um, we we started out with a with a very ambitious uh, goal uh, to be honest uh, um, frederike said Maybe in the end there will be a website or an, an app or um, some some kind of uh, easy to look at number, um, and we're not really sure if this is the end result. What we are sure is uh, that we will produce information and that we will produce uh, both uh, policy recommendations. So we um, want to influence uh, policymakers, and we want to hand out something uh, for. Um, the hacker community for the developers uh, with the AI development guidelines. So this will be something that uh, comes out of that. Um, and if you develop software and care about a livable uh, planet, um, this this is something that is uh, very concrete for you. But I agree, yeah, that's a, this is a huge problem and there's no easy answer to that. And uh, we are just uh, starting this journey of uh, three years. Yeah, but uh, thank you for starting it. Um, so th 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 this would be my second question. Is this the first time that people think about this problem? Are you the first ones uh, um, doing research about this? Uh, or is this is there already a base? 
also uh, a base which is also um, practical used in, in, in algorithms or the internet? Well, uh, there is research about this uh, issue, but it's not like from the sustainability perspective. It's, we have a really, really huge discuss this discussion on the ethical issues, which we refer to as a social dimension. And we have a discussion uh, on the ecological or a growing discussion on the ecological impacts, um, um, energy um, demand and stuff like this, CO2 emissions. Um, the economic dimension, I think it's um, a little bit more connected to other discussions like um, yeah, platform capitalism and stuff like this. Um, but I think um, the perspective, like bringing all these issues together is not yet uh, really well developed. And the other question, how it is like, how we can uh, uh, see it in reality, I think not that much because it's not like the question you 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 um uh, you stated before was like what can i do as an individual but the problem is as an individual you even don't know if you're interacting with an ai based system and that's the first problem <laughs> so um uh, but perhaps uh, you can do stuff like uh, ad blockers or something like this because we we see that uh, ai is really uh, is often used in advertising and that creates uh, really huge amounts of uh, like <laughs> CPU load and stuff like this. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, from a personal view, um, I would be happy to have more, uh, um, you know, uh, transparency in this. And uh, I think your research is could be part of it uh, to find out more as a, as a user about these problems and uh, then adjust your own behavior to this um, to these things if you're interested in so um, it's a pity but I think um, your um, your uh, talk was kind of um, you know it's so complex and it's kind of overwhelming <laughs> but really really interesting <laughs> so we we don't have any questions perhaps the people are, are still at breakfast and it was like oh i have to think about this so perhaps um um uh, you have your contacts on uh, on the fabla or um am i right um let me see um, there are the slides, and uh, inside the slides, you will find uh, contact possibilities. Or, well, I, I will upload oh. uh, something with the contact uh, um, contact addresses. Yes. So I think that would be, this would be great. So if people um, you start thinking about it, uh, this and uh, can come back to you later, and uh, perhaps uh, there will be also some nice input because there are a lot of. Um, uh, clever and smart people at uh, the CCC events and um, perhaps somebody is coming up with uh, ideas or have another questions and so um, ask these questions later via email or something like this and um, I, I thank you very much for this really important input and I'm looking forward for your research results. Perhaps uh, last question, how long uh, will this research last? Um, when will it be finished? When will you start publishing papers and stuff like this? Uh, we will be publishing things uh, throughout um, the course of the project, um, but it is mm -hmm. uh, the, the funding goes uh, over three years. Yeah. So. I think the first uh, sustainable AI report will come in about February 2020, stuff like this. Yeah. And we will have oh, little events. Yeah. yeah, so we're looking forward to this, and perhaps you will come back and have another talk and tell us more about your project. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>